get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is James Holder for IPL TV in association with Matt Clinch, Jim Marbella. With me I've got the Dodsons. We're at Golden Gloves ABC today for the grand opening. What's happening lads, you alright? Yeah, it's sound. Just nice to come up here and see where it all started for me. I um, yeah. had my first day amateur fight for the Golden Gloves. Won all by knockout, as you do. Yeah. And um, yeah, just thought I'd come up and see what it's all about. It's, to be fair, it's sound. Introduce us to the man on your right. This is me, um, the bane of my life, my son Anthony. Um, Who's unfortunately for me I wants to have a career in boxing. I don't really want him to, but you know he's he's gifted like I was. Mm -hmm. So you know, hopefully he can continue progress. Although I'd like him to give up the boxing gloves and get the football boots out because he's good at that as well. You know, but it is what it is. If he wants to fight, I've got to support him as a dad. What's happening, Anthony? You're right, yeah. Right. I'm gonna take it you've got your mum's looks, not off, and obviously not off Jason Stratum. Looks nothing like his mother, thank <laughs> fucking God for that. How <laughs> are you sort of finding things in the um, amateurs, mate? Good, progressed well. I um, started off as a kid with my dad and then just come to the gym and I ABC and start liking it with my mates, and not even with my mates, I just like doing it, something I like doing from a kid, so yeah. enjoying it. See, but he, has, he hasn't got the reality of real life yet, it's about money and jobs and working, so. You know, he, when he's older, he's going to think, shit, made the wrong choice, I should have been a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the sponsor of Dad behind him, haven't yeah, you? You've no, got Dad sponsoring now. But, no, 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 but, no, but Dad's trying to advise him not to fight. I don't want him to fight. Look, although, listen, I've done, I've been successful. I've, I've had a good career, I've enjoyed my career. It's given me a good life, it's given me respect. I've earned decent money out of it. But in terms of what you have to sacrifice to be a fighter, it's far more than what it is to be a footballer. Tell I mean, me, I, explain the sacrifices to me, Tom. I mean, I, when I was a kid, I mean, I, I always remember every Friday, Saturday, jogging past all my mates who were out, partying, having a good time, getting drunk, beards, having a laugh and a joke, Dodo, when I was jogging past them with a the sweatsuit on. You know, that was my life. I was basically training twice a day, three times a day from a young age, while all my mates were out enjoying the childhood, which is, it's not a bad thing because you've got to make sacrifices to, to achieve things in life. I, I get that, but when you weigh up the, the pluses and minuses, you know, I missed out on a lot. I, you know, I, I regret not enjoying myself more when I was younger and having a, having, having a childhood. My childhood consisted of train, 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 and sacrificing sweatsuits. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I'm proud of what I've done, but I just don't want him to have to do that. I mean, <laughs> I know footballers, they party all week. <laughs> And <laughs> play the weekend. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> you know what they do, and you get paid a lot, a lot of money to do it. And you know, I'm not just saying it because he's my son. I mean, he's, he's, when he's on the pitch playing footy, he's one of them that stands out. So I just think he should pursue that. But again, as a fighter, he can fight as well. So you know, I've just got to support whatever he chooses to do. We're here at the Golden Gloves today, the grand opening of the new gym. I know you started, as you mentioned, your amateur career with Golden Gloves. Three fights, three knockouts. What does it mean to see the club? move to get such a good premises such a big gym and full of enthusiasm again what does it mean to you Tony? i mean i'm, I'm made up for the, for the boys you know as i say it's where it started for me but this area as well needs something like this kids have got no direction so this is why you get a lot of the asb and the anti-social behavior with the kids because they've got nothing to do they've got nowhere to go especially in this area so boxing brings them a, a, a purpose something to do a, you know a fantastic outlet of energy, outlet of frustration, which a lot of these kids have got, to come to a gym like this and, and for Wayne to, you know, to, to guide them and put them on the right path. Because honestly, God, you know, no one's sleeping once, it gets a grip here, boxing just gets a grip here and it's something that you can't get away from. It's like you go home, you're non-stop thinking about the gym, non-stop thinking about the next day when you've got to go back to the gym or what you're going to do next. And it's, it's sort of stuff like that these kids need to put energy into, the time into, and you know, even if we save one kid from going to jail, it's you know it's a success. What kids have come through the old Golden Gloves? I know you started out there, but what other Shane boxers Neary was with come me. through it? Shane, Shane Neary. Neary. Shane Neary. You know, we in the gym. Shay wasn't the most talented fighter in the gym, but 
he had hard work and dedication and, and you know, he, his fitness was phenomenal because he was in the army, he was just non-stop train, 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 train and his, his attitude, his fitness and his, and his heart got him to where he was. That's just one of the, the one of the, one of the guys that I can you know, um, use as an example. He was a lad called Danny Peters, who's a good friend of mine still. He had, he was one of the most gifted fighters that I'd ever seen from Netherly. He was one of the most gifted, natural, talented fighters I've ever seen. Beat Neil Simpson um, before he went on to win the British Commonwealth title. But again, you know, family life, day-to-day -day commitments take over, and it's it's hard to make a choice when you've got your family or you know you've got. In your career, which one to choose? You know, you choose your family ten times out of ten. Speaking of careers, speaking of sort of what's going on, can we get an update on how, on how yeah. your sort of ankle is and, it, and, and what sort of happened since then? I snapped my Achilles, didn't I, before I was supposed to fight Jose Burton on the value card, which for me was the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. You know, I was just about to get back onto the big stage after all these years um, in a fight that I was confident that I was going to win. Um, it snapped and, you know, it snapped near Achilles it isn't just a little injury, it's it's a major, major injury. It's one of the main things in your body that you need to move around, especially being a sportsman. So, um, yeah, I snapped it, got rushed away in an ambulance, was on the gas and air because the pain was, I mean, I like to think because of fight, my threshold of pain is quite good, but no, that, sh that shit just sickened me to my stomach. So, um, I went through a rehab, three months wearing the boots up to my knee which in the middle of summer wasn't fun. <laughs> it was sweating, I've had muscle, I've got, now I've got muscle wastage on me, on me calf, I'm gonna have to build my calf muscle. I'm still training, still ticking over, still doing bits and bobs, doing what my body allows me to do. Um, I reckon within the next two or three weeks I'll be able to start running again, which is a major thing for me, because I need to run, that's one of the main things that keep me weight down. Um, apart from that, I'm just gonna keep ticking away, keep in the gym, keep training, try and keep me, you know, keep me hand in it, <clears throat> and then hopefully, Early, early next year I'll be back in the ring, fingers crossed. I know, I know there was talk, sort of talk potentially of trying to get out in December, but with the injury you've sustained and how serious and severe it's been with the rehab, do you feel it's best yeah. to, to, as you say, leave it to, to the new year? Yeah, Stephen Vaughan said that I could fight in his, one of his cards in, the, in December in Edge Lane in the Devonshire House, you know, which was fantastic for me. I want to fight, that's what I want to do, it's what I do do. So, but going back in the gym, you know, trying to do things the way I used to do them, me, me Achilles just wasn't allowing me to do it. And I was thinking to myself, you know, if I push it here, it snaps again, I'm finished. I won't be able to do nothing. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'm actually going to listen to my physios for the change, take a step back, you know, which I've never done in my whole career. Take a step back and try and um, ease into it rather than going on gung ho with 100 mile an hour, trying to do things the way I used to. And obviously with this injury, I can't, it needs to be rebuilt and um, slowly ease back into it. I mean, you are only 36. I say only because it seems like you've been around forever. It yeah, seems like we, we've been talking about you in a boxing ring, like we spoke earlier. You fought Carl Frotch yeah, in 2006. 2006. That, yeah. seems, that seems like an eternity ago it now. It does. It's, it seems like, I mean, I watched it, watch it the other day again, and it's sort of hazy now in my mind. It was that long ago, 10 years, long time. Mm -hmm. but. You know, at least I can say I got beat by one of the best super middleweights we've ever seen, three-weight world champion, three-time world champion, sorry. You know, so it was an experience being in front of 10,000 people shouting, who the fucking hell are you? It was, um, <laughs> it was something to tell the kids about. But, you know, it was a learning curve and hopefully I can, you know, come back from this injury and try and, try and start all over again. That's, uh, as you say, that's why it makes it so important that you do recover fully yeah, from this, this injury. Like I said, 36. Harder, you get, the whole, harder it gets to recover from 36 this 36 now, you know, time, time is not on my side at all. So every week counts, every day counts. So I don't want to, um, don't want to have any more setbacks. You can always go back to doubling for Jason Stratham as well. You know, you've got a lot of, well, lot of work coming your way from that. I, th I think at the minute I'm slightly a little bit too overweight <laughs> to, to be a stunt double for him. <laughs> But um, the beard and the hair, yeah, the hairline, that's about right. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I hope, I hope your Achilles and your ankle heals perfectly, mate. Cheers, Thank Jay. you very much for giving us a bit of time today, lads. Nice and one, Jay. No problem. Pleasure as always.